Okay, this is the boiler feed pump we just started. This is the booster pump. Um, it takes water from the deaerator and boosts up provide net positive suction head for the main feed pump. Um, you see it has a guarded oil pipe. Your supply line comes through here. Return line goes through here. Their lines are inside this line. The high pressure oil is inside and the return runs down it in case there's a leak. It doesn't spray, it stays right in the system. This prevent fires. Turbines are notorious for having huge fires if you ever have an oil leak due to the high temperatures. This is the temperature control valve for the seal water. Um, it runs off these controllers here. You have to maintain a temperature across the seal in this pump. You got your oil drain lines. We have vibration probes, checking bearing vibration, X and Y axis, and also temperatures. Back here, you can kind of see the gearbox. This pump drives at 3,600 RPM full load, whereas the main feed pump will run 58, 25 RPM. Okay. You have your coupling. Um, you see you got your temperature probes in your gearbox. This one's in maintenance mode. You got a little vent filter for your gearbox is like 1.622 gear ratio. Can uh, okay, I see the control rod for the low pressure valves? Here's your inlet steam. This would be the low pressure steam coming in. This turbine has two different steam feeds. You got low pressure and you also have the high pressure. This comes off the cold re the cold reheat steam. Uh, it goes through the turbine, it's partially expanded, then the steam energy is used to drive the feed pump, just increases the plant efficiency. The other side is high pressure steam. It for boiler startup, it comes off the main steam header off the boiler. Through control valves, you run the turbine speed. Then when this steam is high enough, this will take over. <clears throat> you can see we got you know, this one of the control valves. There's also drain valves on this just to get rid of any moisture so you're not hitting the turbine with water. You can see the seal water better here, the control valve and then the seal water going in. This is condensate water. It goes through, cools the seals, and then it goes down to the Glen steam collection tank and back to the hot well. Water's recycled all it can because water is a fairly expensive item. This one, the drain valves that open when you start the turbine, keep any moisture out of it. This is your main feed pump. Um, this here is the superheat spray. It goes up for spraying down the superheat and also the division walls in the boiler, that'll be a, another video. You can see part of the cooling water for the seals coming into here. This is the seal end of it. There's seals on both ends. <clears throat> you have vents up here for filling the casing up. Um, when you get ready to fill the feed pump, you wanna vent all the air off of it. This is the actual turbine in here. You have your return water going back to the generator. Basically, as that whiteboard showed, you'll have booster feed pump water come in, part of it goes into the pump, part goes back up to the generator, then you have your cold water comes in, part goes to the generator, then part will go out to the gland steam. It's a labyrinth type seal. These are super bolts. You screw them down and then you torque each one of these individual bolts and that gives you your final torque. Like I say, this is the superheat spray. There's an actual separate pump impeller stage for this. This has to run quite a bit higher than steam pressure, so you can use this for controlling your superheat steam temperatures. And that's why your water has to be so pure. You're shooting water into the steam lines. 
and any minerals in that's going to deposit in the steam line. <clears throat> Same thing, you got vibration probes, X and Y, and temperatures. This is the cooling water for the seals. Uh, it's set for 15 PSI differential pressure. This is coming off the condensate pump also. This is the cold water side of it. This is the high pressure steam side. These are accumulators for the EHC system. They use high pressure oil to run the valves. These are about 1600 PSI. Um, this one, the block valves for the high pressure steam. This is used for startup. You have a rupture disc up here for high pressure. You'll blow this rupture disc and protect the turbine casing. The turbine exhaust to the surface condenser for the main turbine underneath the floor. So it runs out of vacuum. That just increases the turbine efficiencies. <clears throat> And the steam supply is coming off the cold reheat, so it's down about 150 pounds. It's actually heading to the LP turbine, so most of the energy has been pulled out of the steam, so you can use this to drive this turbine, which is about 13,000 horsepower. <clears throat> this is another drain. You just don't want any water in the steam lines when you start up here. your control valve. You have a throttle valve and a trip valve on the high pressure side. Low pressure side has the stop valve and the control rack. <clears throat> you got a little oil strainer. Your turning gear sits back in here. I really can't see it right now. Uh, turning gears are huge on these turbines. When you shut down, they're hot. You're going to have to turn it manually if the turning gear don't work. The rotor will bow if you don't keep it um, turned every half hour or so. Say this is the rack for the low pressure steam. Rods go down here and you have your little poppet valves that sit on a beam and one will pick then the other one it's set to kind of stage how much steam goes through. It runs about 150 PSI for this. The other side can run almost full boiler pressure, 2500, but usually for startup, you only run up to about 600 PSI, then you'll be on. Here's your turning gear. Um, this is critical when the pump shuts down. It should auto start keep this thing rolling real slow That way you don't warp your turbine shaft that allows it to cool the Turbine has steam seals on it Most of that sits underneath uh, Comes off the gland steam sealing system same as your main turbine From here it goes down to the gland steam condenser. Uh, it's condensed it Goes on along with the main steam turbine to the gland steam condenser These are showing the amount of flow going up to the deaerator up your leakage. These are kind of handy. You can monitor the condition of your seals by how much water's going through it. Say this is the seal back here. This is your bearing. It is a guarded oil bearing. That way if you get a leak in your supply line, it just leaks into the return oil. Oil fires and power plants are usually disastrous. <clears throat> 